like to call the January 12th, 2023 council meeting to order at 3.59 p.m. Machines open for roll call. Let the record show all non-council members are present. Go to the agenda, please. Item two, executive session, there are none. Item three, proclamations. 3A, a proclamation declaring January 14th, 2023 as the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond Day in the Parish of Plaquemines. Council Member Edwards. Reverend Edwards. We have to have an offer and second and vote. I'll make a motion on that just for unanimous second. Reverend Edwards office, can we get a unanimous second? Anybody have an objection? Unanimous second. Go ahead. A proclamation declaring January 14th, 2023 as the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond Day in the Parish of Plaquemines. Whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes its strength, resides in the strength and well-being of all its residents. And whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes that the journey to a strong and healthy parish requires a commitment to removing obstacles and prevents health and wellness at every level of society. And whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes the history of organizing residents that have been involved with removing obstacles while evaluating humanity, racial and social justice over the decades. And whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes the visionary leadership provided by the co-founders of the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond, Mr. Ronald Vincent Chisholm and Dr. James Norman Dunn, as they nurtured the leadership developed of East Bank residents, and whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond as supporting the work of the fishermen and Concerned Citizens Association of the Plaquemines Parish as they work to bring social and political transformations to Plaquemines Parish government. And whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes the leadership nurtured by Ron Chisholm, James Dunn, and the guiding principals and anti-racist organizers over 40 years ago continues to impact Plaquemines Parish residents and whereas the Plaquemines Parish government recognizes the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond along with its net national and international network of anti-racist leaders, or organizers, and supporters who played a central role of bringing hope. 500,000 in finances and over 300 volunteers to the East Bank community in the rebuilding after Hurricane Katrina. And whereas our newly elected District 1 Councilman Reverend Tyrone Edwards has been with the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond since its inception and is a core trainer and member of its training organizing accountable council. And with that, uh, any questions? I just want to say that one of the most exciting days <clears throat> for me as a new next council to present this particular organization. I can't explain. Can, Reverend Edwards, can you pull your mic down? And how happy and excited I am as a new council member as one of the first things happened at this meeting to present this proclamation to this great organization. Many of you all for the years have been seeing me traveling around the country. It is because of this great organization. Uh, and especially after Hurricane Katrina, we were able to rebuild this community because of the hundreds of volunteers, over $500,000 of actual dollars that because of my relationship with this organization, I'm excited. One of the eldest person in that group, you see Mr. Joe Burns in there, a man that's been doing this work for church groups and foundation. The work that we do is international all around the world. And so I, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. Many people wonder why I can speak to it because not only this organization, financially, I'm taking a cut to work here because the money that I can be making with that great. So I, I'm just really excited because not only they're my family, they're my family. All of us know Ron Chisholm. I thought Ron was here. So I, I'm just excited. So I'm going to stop and because Ron not here, I'm asking Dr. Kimberly Richard to come up and, and, and make a big, and, and, and I want to say Tiffany Chisholm is here. Her mother, Geraldine Chisholm, they are from Bohemia. Uh, she was my teacher. So we're going to let 
uh, uh, Tiffany come up and, and represent this great organization. Before she before she comes up, can we vote on it? Oh yes, yes, yes. Machines are open. Let the record show past nine zero. Thank you, yes, ma'am. Thank you, council members. Well, thank yes. you, uh, council leaders. Thank you, Reverend Edwards. Uh, the work that the People's Institute has done is because of the people. Ron Chisholm, who was here earlier, our co-founder, and Tiffany's father, has committed years of volunteer hours to make a difference in the lives of the residents of not only Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, but throughout this state and this country. If you all are familiar with the Chisholm case, the case in Louisiana that opened up the first black judge for the Louisiana Supreme Court, it is the same Ronald Vincent Chisholm that you recognize today that was the chief plaintiff in really making sure that all residents of this great state and this parish have equal access, regardless of age, race, or religion. So the organizing that we do, we bring people together to make a difference, to elevate the life of all human beings. So Reverend Edwards, on behalf of the, the staff, we're here with our staff, uh, Jeffrey Daniels, Joe Barnt is here from California, who uh, Reverend Edwards mentioned has been doing this work for many years in systems, uh, Tamiqua Simon, uh, Joyce, Nicole, Mia, and Zandra. We are all here as, as residents and staff working as you all are working to make a difference. So on behalf of the staff and the many people from around the, the state and the country, and as he said, the world, we thank you for this, this proclamation. Tip. Thank you. I think you covered it all, Dr. Richards, but um, Councilman Richards, I'm sorry, Edwards, we thank you for all that you have poured into the People's Institute. We are honored and delighted to be here on your newly appointed uh, position. And whatever we can do to support you, please let us know. We love you. And thank you all for having us here this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. I want to take a group picture. You want to take a group picture? Yes, sir. Can do that. You want to yes, sir. We could go in the front, yes. take a picture. Pretty um, elegant in her mm -hmm. speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Had a little southern kind of draw to it. But, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Doctor. <laughs> Next item, please. 3B, a proclamation declaring January 16th, 2023 as FCCA Day in the Parish of Plaquemines. Council Member Edwards. Reverend Edwards, you offer? I offer it. Reverend Edwards offers, and second. can we get a unanimous second? Do I have any object objections? Unanimous second. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. 
a proclamation declaring January 16th, 2023 as FCCA Day in the Parish of Plaquemines. Council Member Edwards. Whereas in, whereas in 1981, activist songwriter Stevie Wonder led the first march to make Do Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. a national holiday in Washington, D.C., and it became an annual march. And whereas on November 2nd, 1983, President Ronald Reagan signed into law the historic bill that established Dr. Martin Luther King Day as a federal holiday to be observed on the third Monday of January in each in January each year beginning in the year 1986. And whereas Reverend Tyrone Edwards, our newly elected District One Councilman, participated as a march leader on the Stevie Wonder MLK campaign in Washington, D.C. yearly. He then introduced to the Fishermen and Concerned Citizens Association a revelation of an annual Dr. Martin Luther King holiday march in Plaquemines Parish. This was agreed on by FCCA leadership. And whereas on January 17, 1983, African American residents throughout Plaquemines Parish and neighboring St. Bernard residents and school children participated <coughs> in the first FCCA's first historical Dr. Martin Luther King celebration at the Bethlehem Judea African Baptist Church and marched to the Point El Hash Courthouse. And whereas on January 15, 1986, on motion by Councilman Duffy Levine and seconded by Councilman Ernest Johnson, the Plaquemines Parish Council passed resolution number 86-48, declaring January 20th, 1986, and each sub subsequently federal state federal and state recognized date in commemoration of the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as a regularly scheduled annual holiday. This day was in recognition of the accomplishments of Dr. Martin Luther King on behalf of the poor and disadvantaged people of this nation and Plaquemines Parish. And whereas the Fishermen and Concerned Citizens Association, FCCA, has continually organized Dr. King's celebration in March on the East and West Bank of Plaquemines except for Hurricane Katrina. With that, any questions? Machines are open. <clears throat> it passes 9-0. Reverend Edwards. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, again. Um, this is very dear to my heart. I serve as the first executive director of the Fisherman and Concerned Citizen. Um, it has impacted my life in so many different ways. But all the things that happened in Plaquemine Parish, it allowed me to be part of some transformational things that happened in Plaquemine Parish. And I think it will go down as one of the greatest organizations in, in Plaquemine Parish. We had the president of the Fisherman and Concerned Citizen Association here, Mr. Drexel. Um, I'm going to hear from Walter Hendry, but then I'm going to ask him um, to come up, and this Monday would be the march, and I'm hoping that council members, if you're available, you come out with join us. And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that um, Mr. Drexel will bless us with something that he do every year at the march, and, and I'll I'll let him do that on his own. But Mr. Drexel, put you on the spot with that one. Huh? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? I'm um, Drexel Norris. I'm from Point La Haye, 17977 Highway 15, Sergeant Paul Norsey's Highway 15, thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Fisherman Concerned Citizen Organization, I would personally like to thank you for bringing this to the forefront. The organization has meant a lot to me. It has made a, a great impact on my life and on the lives of a lot of uh people around my age and a little younger and a little older. So I appreciate the organization. I'm, I'm blessed to be the president, the current president. And uh, we're just so grateful and thankful that you are doing this. And I, I had a lot more I wanted to say. I'm just losing it right now. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just eternally grateful to you and to all of the people whose shoulders we are standing on, all the ones who came before us, who led the way and, and fought and showed us how to fight and stand up for what is right 
and to grab what is ours, what is rightfully ours. So I'm standing on the shoulders of those people and I'm eternally grateful. I know when I sit down, I'm going to have a lot more I, I should have said, but uh, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to all of you who voted yes, which was all of y'all. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, we're just going to continue celebrating Dr. King Day. And uh, I love this organization. I won't be president forever, but I'm always going to be a part of the organization. I've been part of the organization since I was a kid, and it's meant a lot to me. Truly grateful. <laughs> give, give, give us just one. Uh, a I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Director, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a group picture in a minute. That was good. I thought we was getting free shrimp ball or something <laughs> since you're a fish. I can't, I can't be that. But Mr. Elwood, man, you don't know how happy I am for you to do this. But I want to thank one person, and you know who I'm talking about. Your mother. <laughs> hey, every, since the 70s, we've been at that courthouse. Since the 70s, we've been in that Palmer House Courthouse. People don't realize that. You, your mom and me, that was some days. And when you, had, when I seen that up there on there, I said, that's Miss Stone. She finally got her day. She finally got her day. And thank you for that, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Henry. We want to take a picture with uh, you, Drexel. Can you come up? I know you do. And, and Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, I just want to say that uh, Dr. Stuart Gouy was a part of that council um, with Duffy Levine when we voted Dr. Martin Luther King as a, a holiday in Plaquemine, Paris. I just want to recognize him for being a part of that historical day. Tell him how old he is, huh? <laughs> He, he met him. <laughs> Next item, please. Or a status report by the parish president. Well, we're just getting started, but uh, the treadmill was rolling about five miles an hour, so when we jumped on it, we jumped on it hard. Um, last couple of weeks, basically it's been taking care of housekeeping, uh, getting ourselves back organized, uh, taking care of uh, just, you know, 
putting the right departments back up underneath the uh, what we feel like in the charter where the uh, directors and all the departments underneath the uh, the three main directors here um, and another fulfillment um, have started reaching out to the businesses Sean to help me uh, we reached out to Yoten the paint company right here in Bell Chase and just kind of questioned them you know what was one of the reasons why they you know they left Bell Chase and Plaquemines but they're a manufacturing company of uh, for paint manufacturing and they no longer manufacture paint in the United States they're what Norway they're from Norway so they're manufacturing all their paints in Norway now um, they still have a very small presence here in Plaquemines Parish a, a sales force but uh, uh, we've started riding the levees uh, uh, doing the inspections and we've also started taking care of the deficiencies on the levees those are some of the things that that was dear to me you know throughout the campaign there so we have started that have reached out to the members here not completely all of you but I've started getting your list together and uh, you know your your top three priorities in your districts spent an afternoon with Reverend Edwards last Friday uh, it was a good day spent some time with Dr. Gooey here in the last couple of weeks so basically just taking care of some housekeeping right now uh, I know John uh, along with Anthony Buris they went up to Baton Rouge this week uh, was a governor's Coastal so started you know heading in that direction as well there so uh, that's about it I don't know if anyone else got anything to say Billy Miss McCarthy so just from the op side, uh, most of you know because you get the phone calls and whatnot, um, we've started the same thing. We started with the low-hanging fruit, the easy stuff to start working on. Uh, we've put out a lot of fires. Uh, this is day eight for us, most of us, so we should start getting some positive phone calls as well. I, I know you're seeing some stuff going around the communities, all communities, um, from every department. Uh, the, the ball is rolling pretty fast, pretty forward. So if you have any issues, just call us and let us know. We, we started with the hot topics that were pressing, and now we're just doing the little basic, some of the drainage things and the, the grass cutting things that were left hanging, uh, some repairs on some different equipment, some pump station repairs. Um, it, it seems to be a pretty smooth transition on our end. Uh, the people seem to have accepted us well so far. They've accepted some of the changes we've put in place in the department so far. Uh, it's baby steps, but it is moving forward. So you should start getting positive results from that kind of stuff. So if you have anything, just let us know. Hey. I just want to end up on this note. I want to give, give a shout out to Mr. Lapine. He was very, very good in the transition uh, when it came time for allowing me to come in and meeting with the, uh, the staff and the employees and the administration and the finance department. He did a great job of that, and I just want to thank him here publicly for that. Thank you. Ms. McCarty. Mr. Hinckley, I just want to say that you impressed the people on Chapel Hill yesterday. I called you at the last minute in the evening, and you came out. It was near dark, and we looked at huge sinkholes, and they're, they're happy that we're moving forward. So thank you. That's it. Forward. Mm -hmm. Reverend Edwards. Again, you know, I want to thank you because at the last notice you came on the East Bank and rode the area with me, look at all the problems that we had, and I immediately saw a result this week. You came with me to the firehouse and helped me. I want to thank all your staff, the people at Finance. They have been tremendous about calling me to make the things happen in my campaign problems as you did. And so I really appreciate the support that I've been getting, not only from you, but from this administration to help make Plaquemine Paris one. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate um, that you taking the time out with me on last Friday. So thank you. Thank you to finance and all the other departments who continue to help me as a newbie. Fine. I want to thank Dr. Gouet. Uh, also, we're talking about it because he's sure been one of those persons to make sure I got in the right place at the right time. So thank all of you all. Mr. Jurisage. Uh, pre Mr. President, can I have a little more than three hot topics since uh, my district runs you know, a lot of different areas? So I'm going to I'm gonna have to appeal for a few more hot topics. Yeah, we can give you two hot topics in each district there. Uh, all right. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mr. Schultz. 
Again, carrying on what everybody's been saying, thank you. I know I had four issues already come up. Billy's taken to care too, and Infomark. Uh, Robert, thank you for looking at those pretty quick. Um, I think you were out there at one today looking at it. I think uh, Infomark was. So thank you for the quick response, all y'all. Uh, Mr. LaFrance? Yes. Could you please forward us a copy of your chain of command? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I have one FEMA contacted me about the Fort Jackson. They have the, uh, don't quote me on the number, million seven or something. They've been trying to get a hold of All South. Nobody will answer the phone call. Uh, why don't you give me that point of contact and I will take care of that and I'll get All South on it. Thank you. Okay. Is the representative with uh, Kennedy's office still here? That's good. Thank you. Next item. 4A, update by charter directors. One, old business. I think we got that already. Yeah. Go to the <laughs> Five, bids and advertisements. 5A, a resolution authorizing the acceptance of bids for furnishing chemicals for a period of one year for use by the Water Sewer Department and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Kotnovich. I'll all fast for a second. Second. Second by Mr. LaFrance. Any questions? Machines open. S is nine zero. If anybody has a beer liquor license, can you queue in? Dr. Gooey. Belchase Fuel Mart, P.O. Box fifteen sixteen, Metairie, Louisiana. That's four AM alcohol license application. Anybody else have one? Can you queue in? Yeah, I have one. Can you queue in? Press the, that way I could turn your mic on. Yeah, I have one uh, for, the, uh, for the Mardi Gras parade they have every year, a day event by Mr. Dalen that will be held at the Reverend Percy Griffin Community Center on the date I, I'm looking for it. Um, but I, I want to present that for you. Anybody else have one? But that you want to offer? Dr. Gooey? Dr. Gooey offers their second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Any questions? Machines are open. Would you like a verbal yes, Reverend Edwards? Yes. Uh, Passes nine zero. Can you take one through seven in Globo? Locks LLC application number 2022-239 dated March 8th, 2022 install pile clusters 140 feet by 30 feet production barge, 250 feet by 55 feet barge and three three inch, two four inch, two six inch and one two inch pipelines. South Pass area, block seven, Pass Alutra, WMA Council Member Edwards. Two. Connecticut Partners, LLC, application number 2022-698, dated July 20th, 2022, repairing casing on existing 24-inch pipeline, number 526A200, Naren Area, Council Member Jurisdiction. Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company, LLC, application number 2022-1002, dated November 9th, 2023, Construct Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company Compressor Station 527 includes piping and valves, gas coolers, fuel skid, modifications to existing pig trap, 
upgrade existing glow down system and install platform. 28460 Highway 23, Port Sulphur. Wapiti Energy LLC application number 2022-1106 dated December 13, 2022 proposed construction of 2.91 acres of terraced mitigation plan north of Bay Batiste area. Houston, Ener Houston Energy Operating LP application number 2022-1134 dated December 20th, 2022, install pile clusters, drill the SL-195 well number two, install heater plat platform, walkway, and well protector platform, two-inch flow line and three-inch flow line, quarantine bay field. Whitney Oil and Gas LLC application number 2022-1135, dated December 20th, 2022, install two four-inch flow lines, Garden Island Bay. Whitney Oil and Gas LLC, application number 2022-1136, dated December 20th, 2022, install two four-inch flow line, East Bay Field. And do I have an offer? You have to. But what I was looking at, on one of the pages from the department on me said, uh, however, prior to commending the work on your project, you must attain approval from state and local agency. But it goes on to say, also for Louisiana Department of Natural Resources and Coastal. And I didn't see anywhere in that. I don't know if it was required, but that was one of the letters I saw in there. I know this, this thing been here since, looked like December the 5th of 22. And, and it looked like 38, 310 that was signed by everybody. But he just said prior to, I don't know if it was a requirement, but in reading the document, I saw that. But I offered, you know, I don't know if that's still needed or not. Uh, Mr. Helmers, you don't know anything about the coastal? It's a levy from the Department of Army, December the 5th, 2022. All right, Mr. Abbott, the offers there a second. Second by Mr. Champagne. Any questions? Machines are open. <clears throat> Can we do a reconsideration? It's showing up here. Machines are open again. Passes eight zero with one abstention. Can can we defer to B? Go to C. Is that the one? C. Is that the one we need to go over. That's the one we can't vote on, right? <clears throat> I don't know. That's a good thing. So are we de deferred? C's deferred until the legal department can look at the, the findings on this one. You can go to D's ref deferred. E is deferred? Yeah. Okay. You can go E. E. Rod Ruiz, New Commercial Business and Flood Plain Zoning District 276, Happy Jack Lane, Port Sulphur, Louisiana. Mr. So LaFrance Off, is there a second? I'll second by Mr. Champagne. Any questions? Machines out. Mr. Newsom. Yeah. Uh, commercial. What, what business is this? What are they doing? They do a marina. Marina. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Machines are open. It 
It passes 9-0. F, Craig and Wanda Barber, temporary RV trailer in a floodplain zoning district, 2765 Hermitage Road, Lake Hermitage, Louisiana. Ms. LaFrance, you offer. Ms. LaFrance offers there a second. Second. Second by Mr. Newsom. Any questions? Machines open. Passes 9 0. Eight introduction of ordinances and resolutions. We have several. The first one is for Councilmember LaFrance. A resolution to rename the Coastal Zone Management Department to the Coastal Resource and Protection Department and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. The following two are for Councilmember Schultz. An ordinance to amend the 2023 General Fund Operating Expenditure Budget, Parish Council District 3 Department and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. A resolution appointing the members of the Audit Committee of the Plaquemines Parish Council for 2023 pursuant to Section 7.08 of Article 7 of the Local Self-Government, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, and otherwise to provide with respect there too, too. The following two are for Dr. Gooey, an ordinance to establish the distribution of departments, offices, and agencies of Plaquemines Parish government and otherwise to provide with respect there too. A resolution authorizing the council secretary to advertise for a special council for the parish council and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Have another for Dr. Gooey, an ordinance to amend and as amended to readopt the, par the Plaquemines Parish Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Section 2-17, Rules for Transaction of Business Before the Council, Rule 17, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. And the final one is for Council Member Champagne, a resolution granting conditional approval for a plan of subdivision of J. Serkovich, LLC, Lot 8A, Section B, Bell Chase Plantation, Section 9, Township 14 South, Range 25 East, Southeastern Land District of Louisiana, west of the Mississippi River, Bell Chase, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, into Lots 8D, 8B, 8E, 8F and 9E, Section B, Bell, Bell Chase Plantation, Bell Chase, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as shown on Map of Subdivision by Dufresne Surveying and Engineering, Inc., Registered Land Surveyor, dated February 11, 2021, revised October 20th, 2022, without cost to Plaquemines Parish Government or the Parish. Dr. Gooey. Kim. Kim. Yours is um, a suspension. Okay. And then. And yeah. Correction of the interview or for the Oh, I thought it was just advertised. Okay. Okay. Got it. I have one for Councilmember Jurisich an ordinance reaffirming prohibition of any Plaquemines Parish issued permit for authorization construction and or operation of any Mississippi River sediment diversion project and directing and authorizing any and all legal steps necessary to prevent harm to Plaquemines Parish, its citizens, its industries, its natural resources, its economy, and its environment from aforementioned Mississippi River sediment diversion projects. And finally, one for Councilmember Kodnovich, a resolution to appoint the members the members whose term have is, has expired on the Coastal Zone Advisory Committee and otherwise to provide the respect there too. And that is it. Can we go to 9-H? Yeah, 9-H, a resolution electing the chairperson of the Plaquemines Parish Council for the year 2023 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member LaFrance. I'll offer and put Mr. LaFrance's name in the blank. Can I get a second? Second by Mr. Schultz. Any questions? Machines open. It 
passes 9-0. like to take a two-minute break. All right, go to... A resolution electing the vice chairperson of the Plaquemines Parish Council for the year 2023 and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Councilmember Kotnovich. Hold off, and if anybody has a name to put in. Mr. Champagne nominates Chris Schultz. Ms. McCarthy seconds. Does anybody have any questions? Machines open. Passes not eight one no. <clears throat> We'd like to take a two minute recess while we switch places. We'll return from break at four forty three PM. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for their vote of confidence. I promise that my door and my phone will be open to everyone. I just want to remind everyone that we are public servants and we are here to serve the public. And I ask that we work diligently to build up the public confidence in this board. Again, thank you for all your vote of confidence. We are moving. At, at this time, if you will allow me, uh, this is the first time we have in a council meeting, and I will ask, start with you, Mr. Elvis, if you would like to say anything to the public on, on your first meeting. I'm just excited to be here. Both of you all know for 42 years I've been on the other side of the desk, so I'm just thankful to God and for the vote of the of District 1 and the precinct that I have on the Naval Base for uh, honoring me with this position. I look forward uh, for the next four years working very close uh, with this administration and all of you also. I thank God for this opportunity. Mr. Champagne, before he again, before he start, I'd like to thank Mr. Champagne for his service in the military and representing our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, I'm both honored and humbled to have the opportunity to serve the people of Plaquemines Parish. I look forward to working with the administration and uh, using President Hinckley's uh, his, uh, motto to power Plaquemines forward. And I look forward to representing the people of District 2. But to my fellow council members, I assure you that I will never do it at the expense of your districts. We are one parish. We need to work together. And if we all grab an oar in this boat and row in the same direction, there's nothing we can't accomplish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Schultz. Again, thank you for every, uh, everybody that voted for me. But we're here as one. We're one parish. Uh, high, I have high hopes for this council and the administration. I think we can accomplish a lot. It seems like we're going to be working together on a lot of issues. Thank you. Dr. Gooey. I have um, had the opportunity to speak with all of the council members, uh, the parish president, and I have to say that the tone of optimism is very encouraging. And uh, I, I welcome it. Uh, I thank all of you who have supported me over the years, and I won't let you down. Thank you. Ms. McCarthy? I, too, would like to thank everyone who supported me. And I want you to know that I am giving you 100% of my effort, and we have been moving forward um, nonstop since we've been elected. I hardly have time to breathe, it feels like. Um, you will see that the entire council has had a, a sort of a breath of fresh air come across that we are working together and working to expedite bringing the best of what can possibly happen to this parish. I thank you. Mr. Newsom? Yes, Mr. Councilman, thank, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, also, I wanted to thank the residents of District 6 for electing me uh, and the people of Plaquemines Parish. I'm here to work for you along while working with you. Um, Mr. Champagne stole one of my uh, campaign speeches about when we rode a boat together we all can be successful. He stole that from me. And, uh, 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 we, we have to, as a government, we have to restore confidence 
in, in, the, in the public, in all aspects of government, from this council to the administration. Because believe me, guys, it, it, when and we always out there knocking on doors, it, it, it's it's tough. The people, the people, we owe it to the people of Plaquemines Parish to do a better job. And with this council and this administration, we are going to achieve that goal. So thank you, and uh, look forward to working with everyone. Mr. Juricic. I, too, am excited to be sitting here. I appreciate everyone who voted for me, and for those who didn't, I will definitely take care of you as well. You know, we got a good thing moving forward here. The only thing I'm sorry about is, you know, once I went to high school, they made me cut the webs from my toes because I used to walk the marsh and everything. Now I got to walk the marsh. I got to have a P-Rogue, marsh buggy, four-wheeler, vehicle and everything. And I should be labeled vice president, by the way, but I'm going to go ahead and just stick with District 8. But I appreciate everything that's been offered. I look really forward to working with these guys. I mean, it's, you know, great group of guys right here. And I'm, I'm really excited. I think we're going to see this parish finally move forward in a positive manner. Thank you. Mr. Konovich. I'd like to thank the constituents in, in District 9 for voting. Oh, that's right. I went unopposed. <laughs> You didn't that's, get one vote. That's that's what happens. That's what happens when you work for the people instead of certain groups of people. And uh, I promise you, I'll work just as hard these four years as I have the last four years. And if you need anybody to do anything, I'm a phone call away. Good. I want to thank everyone <clears throat> for your for your positive comments. Thank you. We'll move to the next item, please. 9A1, an ordinance to amend and amended to readopt Section 4 of Ordinance Number 142, the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance of Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as amended, and the Comprehensive Zoning District Map, there and adopted by reference, and which is parafed thereto, with reference to Application Number 2022-499, dated August 17, 2022. Dr. Gooey? I'll offer. We have a motion by Dr. Gooey. I second. Seconded by Mr. Champagne. Dr. Gooey. Yes, thank you. Um, this, um, this ordinance has gone through the process um, <coughs> with the parish and the zoning board has approved. Um, the good thing I see is it's uh, taking an area and rezoning it to make it more restrictive. And uh, I think that's something that uh, for that particular area, which is right off of Main Street, <laughs> it's a good thing. Of course, the district changed, and because of that, I sent all of this information to Mr. Champagne just to make sure that he reviewed it, and if I missed anything, he would make me aware of that. So um, what I'd like to do is just turn it over to you, uh, Council Member Champagne, to see if you have any comments. We'll go from there. Dr. Gooey, thank you for your legwork on this, and uh, you, you did all the heavy lifting here, but again, it's another opportunity to improve uh, the Belchase area and Plaquemines Parish as a whole. I think it, uh, it, improves, it improves the area and gives us an opportunity to move the, to move the parish forward and do good things. So again, thank you for your work, and uh, that's all I have. Any more comments from the table? Administration, audience. Yeah, Doc, this sounds like my area. What, what kind of changes are you proposing here? The uh, the changes are uh, taking this piece of property and going from a A1 rural and agriculture and putting it into a RM2, which would be duplexes. Okay. And you know the piece? You know what it is, huh? Yeah. Yeah, right off of... Uh, okay. Um, I'm good with it. Okay. Any more com comments from the audience? Machine is open. And the measure passes 9-0. Two, an ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision lot 10C, Jesuit Bend, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, into lots 10C and 10C2, Jesuit Bend. 
Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as shown on the plan and plat of survey by Dufresne Surveying and Engineering Incorporated, dated September 19, 2022 and November 11, 2022. The owner, having fulfilled all of the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the Parish of Plaquemines without cost to Plaquemines Parish Government or the Parish of Plaquemines, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member Newberry, and this is changed to Council Member Newsom. Mr. Newsom? Yeah, well, I'll offer it for discussion and ask for a second. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Newsom, seconded by Mr. Conovich. Mr. Newsom. Yes, this um, ordinance came forward to this board, this council, in November. Uh, originally, it was five lots. Uh, we had some um, residents that sent some letters and stuff out to uh, opposing this. Uh, this body, this council, uh, asked the property owner to do exactly what she did to go to two lots. Um, and through that process, they had some little minor details. Miss uh, Amitra from Permits has asked me to uh, uh, defer this matter. We are scheduling a meeting. She assured me she'd have some meetings with the, uh, when this falls under Mr. DeMarco uh, and uh, the permits and the property owner. So we'll uh, we'll get that together. She has assured me it will happen before the next council. So, Mr. President, I ask you to, if you could, I know Mr. Marco is coming on board next week, put this high on his priority list. So this is what we talk about, some of the low-hanging fruit. Let's knock this out and let's move forward. I do not perceive, perceive this to be an um, a issue. Uh, everything was approved when it was five lots, but we had some some residents. So she she, the property owner, uh, did what the council asked her to do. So, uh, like I said, just some minor details. So, uh, if anybody's got any questions, I'll happily answer them. If not, I'll defer this matter. Mr. Jurichich? Yes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ronnie, I know you took Trudy's place, but this is now in District 8, if I'm not mistaken. It's not? No, sir. It's on the east side of the road? It's on the bay side. side. It's on the north side of the road, yeah. yes. In Jesuit Bend? Yeah, right by Wilson Drive. Okay, that's north of me? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Right south of Buford and them. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be sure. No, it's 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 district uh, six, <clears throat> yes. All right, thank you. Okay, this item is deferred. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I will defer this item. We'll move to the next item, please. A B, a resolution approving the issuance of a third two-year extension commencing upon the expiration of the current two-year extension period to Woodland Borrow Pits, LLC, for the existing sand pit on property located in an FP floodplain zoning district at, at 22441 Highway 23, Port Salfa, Louisiana, all in accordance with application number 2014-4771, dated January 7, 2013. Council Member LaFrance. I so offered. Second. 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 Second about Dr. Gooey. Any questions from the table? From the audience? Hey, the parish getting their money off of this uh, borrow pit. Oh. The parish getting the money that's supposed to get off this borrow pit. Yes, we, we receive a uh, permit. Uh, the fees from the permit. Okay. All right. Supposed to get so much a load, too, huh? Right, right. That's why I asked, are we getting the money? We be, uh, we're approving these names, but these guys make a killing the people getting nothing. I'd like to call Mr. Paul Hogan to the mic, please. State your name and address, please. Good afternoon, Councilman. Paul Hogan with Woodland Bar Pits. In addition to the fees, you also pay the road use fee, and that's collected by uh, Val, Val at the uh, Planning Department, and everything's up to date. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any question from the table? Administration? I just wanted to say on these matters that Ms. Amitra would not, um, before this gets to you all, she verifies all these issues. And so I can promise you if they were behind in fees, uh, it's something she would have brought to our attention. Any more questions from the audience? The machines are open. The 
and the measure passes unanimously 9-0. Next item, please. C, a resolution of the Plaquemines Parish Council to establish the method for appointing the new register of voters in Plaquemines Parish and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Kotnovich. I think we can defer that. We, we take yeah, we care of it. We, we draw it. E, an ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan, new construction, wood lawn, fire station project, and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Bartholomew, and this is changed to Council Member Edwards. I'm sorry, which one is we? Nine e. What happened to D? He was withdrawn. He was withdrawn. Oh, okay. I see. I really don't want to take a position as I really hadn't a chance to really read into this or even to discuss this with Mr. Bartholomew. So I like to defer this so I can spend some time doing it because I'm not prepared. Thank you. That item is deferred. We'll move to the next item, please. F, a resolution granting conditional approval for a plan of subdivision of J. Serkovich LLC, Lot 9B, Section B, Belchase Plantation, Section 9, Township 14 South, Range 25 East, Southeastern Land, District of Louisiana, West of the Mississippi River, Bell Chase, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, into lots 9F and 9G. Section B, Bell Chase Plantation, Bell Chase, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, as shown on map of subdivision by Dufresne Surveying and Engineering Incorporated, registered land surveyor, dated March 24, 2022, revised October 20, 2022, without cost to Plaquemines Parish Government or the Parish of Plaquemines. Council Member LaHaye, and this is changed to Council Member Champagne. <clears throat> Mr. Champagne? Yeah, we have a motion by Mr. Champagne, seconded by Dr. Goy. Mr. Champagne. Yeah, we're simply subdividing uh, lot 9B into lots 9F and 9G, uh, approved by the parish. Mr. Champagne. So we're simply subdividing uh, line not B, line 9B into lots 9F and 9G, one lot into two. Uh, it's been approved by all parish department heads. And simply, it must comply with all parish subdivision ordinance and stated it will. I recommend that this be approved. Is there any question from the table? Mrs. McCarthy. This is just a question of curiosity. Can you explain in layman's terms where that's located? Yes, it's on Main Street. Uh, okay. It's located uh, south of Park Riverwood subdivision. Thank you. Any question from the administration? Audience, machines are open. Message passed unanimously, 9-0. Next item, please. G, an ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan, repair sewer lift stations project, and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Gooey. Offer, offer and ask for a second. We have a motion by Dr. Gooey, second. seconded by Reverend Evans. Dr. Gooey. Yeah, uh, this item was given to me by the administration. Uh, we have three lift stations uh, in the parish that are in need of repair. And uh, if any one of you depend on a lift station, uh, you know if it needs repair, you want to have it repaired. Uh, one is in Bell Chase uh, on Omega, one is in Empire near Daybrook, and one is in Davant near the community center. So a proposal for the design, survey, and geotech services uh, in the amount of uh, 195.060 was received last year. The recommendation by the administration is to take these funds out of the infrastructure fund. Um, I'm open to any questions, but if you direct them to the administration, you probably get a better answer. <laughs> any questions from the table? Mr. Newsom? Yes, this is, Ms. I guess this is a Ms. Rochelle question. <laughs> She's the money. <laughs> so this is coming out of the infrastructure designation. Okay. And thank you. Any more questions from the table? Administration? Audience? 
Yeah, Doc, you said this to do uh, the engineering part of it? Or? The, um, well, uh, the, the way I understand it's design, the, um, the design, the um, surveying geotech issues, uh, which is, uh, they're going to tell you what that means. And from what station it is? One on Omega and Belgium. So they're doing all three of them? One in Empire, and there's one in... Um, We're doing all three? Yeah. Mother fine. Let's go. Any more questions from the audience? Machines are open. The measure passes unanimously. 9-0. Next item, please. I, an ordinance by the Plaquemines Parish Council as and on behalf of the West Bank Levy District and Buras Levy District to appropriate new temporary work area easements in certain portions of land in Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, to construct the New Orleans to Venice NOV West Bank Hurricane Protection Levy Project NOV 09 St. Jude to City Price, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, for levy, flood wall, drainage, flood access, and hurricane protection purposes, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member LaFrance. So offered. Second. Seconded by Reverend Evers. Any discussion from the table? <clears throat> Administration? Audience? Machines is open. And the measure passes unanimously, 9-0. Next item, please. J, an ordinance prohibiting the sale of imported shrimp in the pa parish of Plaquemines, Council Member LaFrance. I'll defer that item. K, an ordinance by the Plaquemines Parish Council as and on behalf of the Buras Levy District to appropriate new temporary work area easements on a certain portion of land in Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana to construct the New Orleans to Venice NOV West Bank Hurricane Protection Levy Project NOV 10 Happy Jack 2 Naren Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana for levy, flood wall, drainage, flood access, and hurricane protection purposes, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member LaFrance. I so offered. Second. And seconded by Mr. Schultz. Any question from the table? Administration? Audience? Machines are open. Councilmember Gooey. Dr. Gooey. And the measure passes unanimously, 9-0. Mr. Next. Chairman, um, it is requested by the Finance Department to move to 9-R before we adopt any further legislation. Okay. Move to that item, 9-R. Or an ordinance to amend the 2023 general fund unreserved undesignated fund balance and the fund balance designated for parish wide sewage and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Gooey. We have a motion by Dr. Gooey, seconded by Mr. Schultz. Dr. Gooey. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is to um, what happened after the budget last year, um, a negative fund balance was created. And so there are several items on the agenda that if we don't restore the money into that negative fund balance, we can't fund some of the manpower needs that are coming up on several of the uh, upcoming resolutions. So if there's any specific questions, I, I would defer to the administration for that, to, for the specifics. Is there any more questions from the table? Mr. Konovich? Since the last thing we just voted on was sewage uh, issue, why didn't we take the money from this instead of the general fund? The last item for the sewage that judges voted on, the lift stations, that came from the infrastructure. The manpower ordinances that are going to come up for vote are coming from the unreserved and designated. So we need to vote on this to transfer. 500,000 from sewer-wide projects back to the unreserved unreserve and designated to give it a positive balance. Well, I know we talked and 
that was a, like a slush fund we had y'all put money into last year. Yes, anything over $19 a barrel goes into the bond indebtedness until it's capped at $10 million. Anything over $10 million rolls into this parish-wide sewer fund. And I know you had a problem with energy at the time. A bill from energy, and just from my house to the end of Highway 23, there are 110 lights out that I've been calling energy about. Mm -hmm. And I think we should use that as a, a bargaining tool. We should get credit. For what? Well, we're paying for electricity for lights on the road that we're not getting. We, we have a meeting set up uh, next, Thursday next Thursday with the Entergy because we're aware of those lights and exactly what you just said. And these lights have been out for some time. So we're going to be talking about that exactly that right there. So the first year I'm sure we're still paying eight dollars a month for those lights and they haven't been uh, mm -hmm. they haven't been on. First year in office, I got with energy. They said put flag and tape on the poles. I put flag and tape. It rotted off. I put more flag and tape. Well, we're going to hold their feet to the fire. We're going to put the flag and the tape on the poles, and uh, we're going to follow up with them and make sure that they, they follow through with what they're supposed to do. So, okay. Thank you. Any more questions from the table? Yeah, I got one. I got one. Mr. Newsom. Yes, uh, I know this, this fund is named, and I think we spoke with Rochelle and myself today, this fund is named Parish-Wide Sewage. Would the administration have any objection to us renaming this fund? Because this, when we pull money out of it, they say, y'all taking money out of the sewage fund. No, that's not really true. It's just renamed. Would y'all have any objection to that? That's, that would be your decision. Thank you. I like surplus or... Mr. Schultz. Yeah, uh, Ron, uh, Ronnie, I agree with you 100%. We talked to Rochelle earlier. It's kind of misleading, and that's something I'm going to work on coming up to get properly labeled. Any come more comments from the table? Administration? Audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes unanimously, 9-0. Next item, please. We're going to revoke back to 9-L now. An ordinance to amend the 2023 manpower structure and operating expenditure budget and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Gooey. I'll offer. Um, we do have changes. I'll read them. On line 14, it shall now read as amended by appropriating 104, $104,080 from the general fund unreserved Undesignated fund balance. That was the blank, right? Yeah. Yes. I'll offer. We have a motion by Dr. Gooey. Ask it for a second. Second. Seconded by Reverend Edwards. I'll uh, turn the um, questions to the, uh, an explanation to the administration. With the changes that we've made, um, we've taken the responsibilities from the coastal zone director uh, and his responsibilities is, are to be up in Baton Rouge um, chasing the grant monies and doing what he's supposed to be doing and bringing the monies back into the parish. What this position does, this, this goes back into flood control and our levies. When the coastal zone brings monies back into the parish, we're there going to have monies for coastal restoration projects. So this position well, to be overseeing that, working with the contractors that are doing this work, plus also, like I said earlier, we've already started making the inspections on the, on the levees and taking care of the deficiencies. This individual right here will also be that person riding the levees with the chainsaw, with the shovels, with the, the wheelbarrows, with the, the, the rock and all, and taking care of those repairs on a daily basis there. So. <clears throat> Mr. Newsom? Kim. Cue him in. Cue him in. I'm sorry. I, I thought she said she had all the all the mics live. <laughs> I did, but somebody must have when he took him out with the cue, it uh -huh. takes the mic off. And I'm going from screen to screen. Okay. It. That's fine. So 
uh, hearing that, I, I'm, I'm going to support this. But this this is, this is uh, person that we hired, it sounds like it's going to be a pair of gloves type of wearing person. Boots on the ground, gloves wearing. Boots on the ground. That's what we talk. A worker man, worker okay. bee. Okay, yes. thank you. Reverend Edwards. Well, that, uh, Mr. Newsom, that was actually going to be my question. Um, when he said wheelbarrows and all that, that's what I, I was really assuming. But, you know, if it's, so I didn't know that coach and zone management really was part of levy. So that was the only new thing to me. Well, they work with CPRA. I mean, anything that's flood control. Um, so. No, the reason I say that because you said he was going to be assisting um, our culture zone person. Well, he'll be assisting by taking care of business and getting the work done. So, so we'll get a more job descriptive of this person? I, they, they, I can do that, yeah. Do. Sure. And what are the qualifications for this position? This is an unclassified position. So this, this position right here is someone, this is, the individual that we're talking about right here is also going to be someone that's very qualified during the hurricanes. You know, we've got the flood walls, the floodgates that need to be open and shut uh, right there at, uh, at Captain Larry's. This person is going to have experience with that. Uh, this person is going to be able to, to take care and ride the, uh, run the airboats. Um, this is going to be a flood fighting individual uh, who can can lead us during times of uh, distress when there's hurricanes and other storm events and, and things like that. So it's it's the qualifications is to know when these storms are coming, we need to know where the deficiencies are in the levees. So when we sit there, we can say, look, that storm's coming in from a certain direction. He will also know, well, look, you know what, we haven't been able to take care of certain situations uh, at this, this location in the parish. We need to get down there and flood fight. And that might be flood fighting in the middle of the night, uh, early in the morning. Uh, it's someone that just knows our levees, knows where, if there are deficiencies, knows where the trouble spots are so that we can always take care of our residents here in the parish. Mrs. McCarthy? I'm just curious. Under what department or which director will that person? It would be under Coastal Zone, okay. but it's it's a, it, they will answer to me. It's an unclassified position, so they're at will. It's an at will employee. And so just one person. I'm sorry. Just one. Person. It's just one person. Now, he will be from time to time. He will have a helper out there working with him. Okay. All right. Any more questions from the table? Administration? Audience? Look salary that though. Look salary. You told me you were gonna tell me 75, that. Seventy-five thousand. How much? Seventy-five thousand. All right. Okay. You were coming, I already had it. All right. Okay. Plus what? And plus benefits. We're going on. <laughs> Any more comments from the audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes nine, four, two against. Oh, I'm sorry. Seven, four, two against. Thank you. Um, an ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan resurface Highway 11, Empire to Triumph, and, and otherwise to provide with respect there to Council Member Kotnovich. We have changes and um, fill in the blanks. On line eight, the amount of, let me put my glasses on, $5,682,000. Okay. has changed to five million ninety four. $1,241. On line 11, $2,588,147 from the fund balance designated for infrastructure has been removed, and 200, 200 million, $2,000,000 from the fund balance designated for emergencies has been added. And those are the changes. I'll offer for discussion. Can you repeat that again? The first number. Sure. On line 8. <clears throat> 
$5,682,388 has been removed. Removed, okay. Removed. And then $5,094,241 has been added. Thank you. You're welcome. Offer for discussion. We have a motion by Mr. Konovich for discussion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Juritich. Mr. Uh, Konovich. I, I think it's time we start fixing the road. I, I don't know how, how, when was the last time some of y'all rode on just this section, but all the Highway 11 needs to be redone. You know, I'm waiting the way people text and drive today and the road's condition. I'm waiting for somebody to be upside down in a ditch and hopefully they don't get killed. Uh, if we don't start fixing it, we'll be paying in the long run. And if y'all have any questions. Mr. Durgent? Yes, uh, I ride this road every day, a good portion of it, and uh, couldn't agree with Mr. Konovich more that it is in dire need of, of repair. It definitely, hopefully, one day resurface. But I would, uh, I would hope that we can start working on this and come up with a plan that at least repair those bad spots because, as he said, school buses take this highway every day. People are going around these holes. We have holes. I found one in Home Place that's got oyster shells in it you know, on, you know, between, and it's, it's in that bad of shape. Some of these things need to be looked at quick. The repairs he's talking about, there's a very, very rough road, rough section of road just south of the Empire Bridge. You know, the Boothville, in Boothville, the River Road is nearly impassable. So Highway 11 does need some major work, but for the time being, if we can get something, at least get some repairs going, and I think we need to come up with a plan and try to come up with something where we can get this thing funded so we can get get this need. I mean, how long has it been since it's been resurfaced? I, can't, I don't even remember. You know, there are, there's some good areas in it, but there's the bad areas, and some of them may only take 10 feet of repair. You know, some of them, you know, a little bit larger. So if, uh, if you know, if there's any way we can start addressing these issues, get engineering out there and, or something to go start marking these spots off, which they, they've been marked off. They've been ground down, some of them, but you can only grind to the dirt. Uh, so it definitely needs to be looked at. And, and I would hope that we don't wait too long. We get something going because I agree with, you know, Council Member Konovich that we, we do have, we do have to get to working on this soon. Uh, it's the safety of our children and the safety of our citizens. The reason I went with such a big spot and so much money. Two years ago, we did just that, did ports in Triumph. One port was about two, three feet wide by 20 feet long because it was going into the ditch. They redid it, and it's going into the ditch already. So that was money we spent on nothing, really. And okay. Well, look, let us, let us get together, you know, you two and, um, and whoever, you know, two more if, if need be. Um, Get with Billy Engineering. Let's get out there and and do an assessment uh, and try to come up with a plan on this right here. And, and look, look, we'll move forward. We'll move move on it fast here. Um, let's see if we can't try to get together next week. Uh, let's find some time. Okay. Yes, sir. Start moving forward on it there. I mean, I. I, do we want to start all the way, you know, on the river road in Venice and just start working our way up? Or we can take and maybe break it down into three areas, you know, kind of work up and go at uh, where the uh, where your office is there, you know, at Fort Jackson, go up a little bit and, you know, and then even come up towards the Empire area. And, and you know, so we're addressing not just one area. Maybe we can focus on, you know, different areas at the same time. Here. I brought it up to you earlier. I got them to buy a pallet of blacktop bags. That's, we need to find that by, a pallet of black uh, asphalt. It's here somewhere. I offered to fill the holes myself. Yeah. And okay. I never got the bags. Right. And, and also, we do know there are different types of asphalt, too. So and that's I was telling Mr. Kinovich, right. Maybe that repair he's talking about didn't have the proper right. asphalt. And that's, Another thing we have, you know, EMS, fire trucks, everything have to go down this road at high rates of speed, and some of these bumps 
you know, they're dangerous. So. Uh, I, and I have been on that road probably within the last three to four weeks here, so I'm, I'm totally aware and fully of, I've seen, you know, how bad it really is here. So. Ms. McCarthy? Mr. Gunovich, uh, has there been any estimate made as to how much it would cost to patch it versus repave it? I talked to Ken Dugas, and I don't remember the amount we paid last couple of years ago for just that one small section. Was it that a repavement or was no, it a they, patch? It was a patch, and it needs to be done again. But I talked to Ken, and he says it's a uh, six hundred thousand a mile to redo the whole, oh, to, to redo repave. redo it. And I was using the ground up blacktop to go to the marinas, so we wasn't, you know, we using stuff in places we need material too. And with the rollover coming. When she closes the books from last year, we would be able to put some money back into the bond and indebtedness fund because our bond payment of the year is what eight million, so we got two million to play with. We could put back with all the venture global buying right now, money coming in. We need to try to use it for things to make the people's life a little better, and. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the safety issue, too. Reverend Edwards? Yeah, my, my question, and maybe it might be to finance, is that the fund uh, balance designated uh, bond and debtment, the money that uh, Councilman Condor is talking, is that for all the areas that that was a specific amount just for his area? And how would that affect the whole fund? Bond and debtedness fund has $10 million in it. We normally try to keep it as high as we can because that's for a year's worth of bond payments. In the case that we can't ever afford to pay them, we have this as a backup to pay to make our bond payments. Um, this is the first year we've been able to get back to 10 million since the all crash several years ago. Um, you know, really Moody's and Standards and Poor's really like it, likes that we have this designation as a reserve to ensure that we can make our bond payments. Um, that's up to y'all what y'all want to do with it. <coughs> yes, it does help with our financing and everything on, on our rating. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schultz. I agree that it needs repair. My main concern, I think, is that Mr. Edwards just mentioned, is where the money's coming from, um, the bond fund and the American Rescue Plan. My understanding is, uh, Rochelle, is we only put money in the bond indebtedness fund if oil is over a certain amount, correct? So if that goes back down, then in the future we could be short in the bond indebtedness fund <laughs> or the bond payments, correct? Yeah. I just want to make sure. I mean, I'm not opposed to working out a plan and trying to find a solution, but I just want to make sure financing-wise we're doing things wisely. I think at the last... Uh say five to six years has gotten down to like maybe seven million um, that would not have covered one year's worth of bond payments okay and then the last couple of years is is ticked back up and this okay. is the first year we've seen seen 10 million again okay and what's the current price right now of oil 78 was so pretty much anything over what you say nineteen dollars in theory is going into that uh, PW sewer fund correct or, it's here first, caps at $10 million. Correct. Anything but, over $10 million is going to Parish Wide Sewer. But right now we have $10 million yes. in there. So right. as long as we keep $10 million in everything, it will be on PW's sewer fund, which maybe in the future we could use for highway loan. Just thought. But I'm willing to work with you and find a solution. Mr. Champagne. Yeah, I was uh, challenged by... Uh, Councilman Cognovich to go ride down Highway 11, which I did, and he was right. It's in bad shape. It's really bad shape in front of the pogey plant where uh, Mitch is. Well, Mitch, you're from Grand Isle of Gretna with your district. So. Um, but the road is in bad shape. But I would ask my colleagues to consider a little tactical patience here and give the administration time to seek some other revenue streams, potentially some road, uh, the uh, infrastructure money that the uh, 
it's being pushed down to the state. Is there any way we can tap into that resource? And before you answer, I, I want to give you all the due diligence, but tap into that and at least give you some time to formulate a plan, because I do agree it needs to be done, but I'd like to go through it methodically and not go through uh, and tap the wrong revenue streams when there was other revenue available. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I'm asking right now. Let's, let's give us an opportunity and let's, let's come up with a plan. We don't have a plan right now. Right. We, know, we know we have a situation, but we need to go out, uh, inspect it, and come up with, with the that's, plan. That's why I put it up for discussion only. Okay. But right. you, you put yourselves in my constituents' spot. The, the $10 million in bond and indebtedness came from all royalty, so it came from District 9 and District 1. <clears throat> and all the new money coming in from Venture Global is in District 7. And since Katrina, just out of District 9, over $100 million was moved. Some of it went to District 1 to redo the levy, and then some came to Belchase. But with that $100 million, we could have redid the roads, the sewage plants, the uh, water, water plants. So... I think my constituents have been waiting long enough, but I'll, I'll give you time. Mr. Newsom? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I haven't been on Highway 11 in a long time, but I do know it's probably in bad shape and it's, it's in need of repair. It's probably been, needed, been in need of repair for a while. But um, like some other folks said, taking some monies out of these these funds, is really it, it really puts us in a in a financial, I, I, I can't say financial, but um, a, as a steward of the taxpayer's money, to me the most important thing we can do as, as a government body is, is pay down our debt, get get that work, pay down our debt. Let's try to get that moving so we don't have to have as much in this bond and debt as fund. And I understand that a lot of the all money comes in, but I look at Plaquemines as a whole. I got elected from District 6, but as I said before, I'm here for the people, all the people of Plaquemines Parish, which being uh, Highway 11 folks are, are very important. And uh, I just wish that, uh, I, well, I, we're going to, sounds like we're going to go that way, that we give our administration some time to come up with a plan. Uh, technically, we've all been in office, calendar days, 12 days. So let's give them some time. I think they're on the right track, as we can say. We've seen a lot of positive coming out of the uh, what's going on in, 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 the, in the parish, on the highways and stuff. So I believe they have a good plan. And uh, right now, and, I, and I'm pretty sure i got confidence in the administration, Mr. Hinckley and the staff, to, to come up with a plan that will be uh, successful for the parish as a whole. With that, I yield, Mr. Chairman. Reverend Edwards? Yeah, my question would be to maybe, I don't know, to Mitch. Please talk into the mic, Reverend Edwards. I don't know if it's to Mitch or Mr. Condovich or the parish president. If anyone thought about talking to the poker plant people, too, because I heard somebody say some of the damage right there about them also investing some money into repaying that road. It's just a thought. I don't know if they have been in the conversation. I see uh, the president scrunching up on me on that. The, the problem I feel like sometimes we, we go to our businesses too much, uh, quite a bit, right? You got to remember. Yeah. They every, do a lot for the community. Every ball field, every right. festival, every, every event. group, every they all go to the same companies asking for donations. You know, I'm a newbie, I don't know. Af, after a while, you know. But Mr. Newsom? Also, I failed to mention... Also, I failed to mention that um, myself and Mr. Juris met with the gentleman, Joe Crafassi, from Senator Kennedy's office. He was in the he was in the audience earlier, but he had told me that he has a meeting in uh, St. Charles, and then he has another one in St. Bernard tonight. So he's busy, so he wasn't able to stay. But he has spoke to us, myself and Mitch, were in there, and he brought up just this type of uh, issue that there possibly is some grant money out there. Um, he he told us the ways to go look into it, and he would assist us in any matter that we could. So that's a resource to add. Some of you probably know him. I met him for the first time today as being, an, as Reverend Edwards said, a newbie. But it uh, seems like an, a resource we'll have to tap into. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. With that, I'll withdraw. Withdraw or defer? Defer. That item was deferred, 9M.
in an ordinance to amend the 2023 manpower structure and operating expenditure budget and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member McCarthy. And we have a fill in a blank on line 13. We're inserting the general fund, unreserved, undesignated fund balance. That's it. You so off it? Yes, I offer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion by Ms. McCarthy. No, he doesn't help. <laughs> Looking for a second? Second. Seconded by Reverend Evans. Ms. McCarthy. Uh, this is to fund my uh, office. Your assistant? My for, for my assistant, yes. yes. Any questions from the table? Administration? Audience? Machines are open. And the measure passes unanimously, 9-0. Next item, please. Oh, an ordinance to amend the 2023 manpower structure and operate an expenditure budget and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member Jurisdich. We have a lot of changes. Um, well, additions. There's a second whereas that's been added, which reads, whereas after a review of the manpower needs of the Plaquemines Parish Council District 3 Department, it has been recommended to revise the full-time council administrative assistant position from full-time to part-time at an annual salary of $24,663. Then on lines 14 and 15, the following has been added. The 2023 manpower structure is amended by revising the full-time full -time council administrative assistant position from full-time to part-time at an annual salary of $24,663. Then on lines 18 and 19, the fill in the blank was um, added, was put in, the general fund, unreserved, undesignated fund balance. Then beginning on line 32, there's a new section three, which states the 2023 general fund operating expenditure budget, Plaquemines Parish Council District three department is amended as follows. We are putting, we're taking out $23,490 for salaries and wages, increasing the PR taxes, FICA taxes to $1,175. The retirement line item is decreased by $5,672, and the group insurance health has decreased by $6,170, and Section 3 is now Section 4. And those are the changes. So offered. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Juricic, seconded by Mr. Schultz. Mr. Juricic. Yes, uh, this is uh, District 8. Currently does not have a, f a funding for an assistant, so this is what this is to get, to get my assistant. So that, you know, in my office, so this is what that's about. Mr. Schultz. And I, I'm, I'm uh, adding to uh, his, since he already had his introduced, basically I'm changing mine from a full-time to a part-time. I'm going to be in the office every day, so I figure uh, I'm going to see if I can do my, do it with a part-time person and uh, try to save the parish some money. And uh, I hope. In the future, through attrition and stuff, we can find a way to either share secretaries or pool secretaries or something like that to help, uh, or I, not secretaries, administrative assistants, uh, to help save the parish some money. But that's in the future. But that's basically the changes I've added to Mr. Jersich ordinance. Any more comments from the table? You changed his ordinance or? I, correct. Or, no, I added to his. Like, I added a, a separate section to his, uh, since his was already introduced. <coughs> that was part of the changes. Correct. That's all, all right. the changes. Yes. Yeah, so basically adjust the mind, mind to a part-time position. Nothing's changed on his side. So we got two and one. That's correct. Right. Yes. Two, four. Any more comments from the table? Administration? Audience? Mitch, Chris, man, good to, it's good to see you all. The parish is getting a little money back from some of you all. And I hope it's sincere, but, but I hope it's not that deal where you guys gonna come up with that seven, that seven five deal. 
I hope you, I hope that's not setting people up for that one. You know, we're gonna need to change this council. Did you, did you like it is? Any more comments from the audience? Machines is open. And the item passes 9 0. P. An ordinance to amend the 2023 manpower structure and otherwise to provide with respect there to Councilmember LaFrance. Withdrawn. P. Ten approval of the minutes from the December. Q. Q. I oh, got a Q. Sorry. And an R. Oh, we did an R. I must uh, yeah, skip over that. We're on Q. Okay. An ordinance to amend the 2023 manpower structure and operating expenditure budget and otherwise to provide with respect there to Councilmember Gooey. We oh, have. Awesome. We have a fill in a blank on line 13. The general fund unreserved undesignated fund balance has been inserted. Offer. We have a motion by Dr. Gooey, seconded by Mr. Champagne. Dr. Gooey. Yes, sir. This is to fund a um, receptionist PBX operator. Uh, we've been using existing staff to do this, and it's. Um, it's one of those situations where we're pulling people from other uh, areas to fund, uh, to operate the PBX system part time. This is where, when someone calls the parish, this is who answers the phone. And um, the uh, administration has requested that we have one person that is responsible for answering the phone and directing, uh, directing the, the caller to the appropriate area. Uh, the funding for this uh, comes from unreserved, undesignated. The annual salary is 22982 and with um, the benefits and insurance, the total amount is 45310 Mr. Hinckley, if there's anything additional you'd like to add, feel free. Well, well said. I'll just answer any questions if need be. Okay. Any comments from the table? Mr. Yeah. Newsom. Yes, Mr. Hinckley. Is this the person when you, again, I'll refer to Mr. Edwards as uh, comment, the new for the newbies, is when you come in, you're building 100, that person will sit right there at that desk. And, right. Uh, well, thank you. Um, it's, it's a good thing. That's a good thing. So I'll, I will be supporting this. Any more comments from the table? Administration? Audience? Machine is open. Measure passes unanimously. 9 0. Next item, please. 10. Approval of the minutes from the December 8, 2022 regular meeting. I'll offer. We have a motion by Mr. Conovich, seconded by Mr. Newsom. Any question? Audience. Machines open. <laughs> The measure passes unanimously, 9-0. 11, new business. 11A, introduction of resolutions wherein suspension is being sought. One, a resolution appointing Plaquemines Parish members of the Regional Planning Commission and otherwise to provide with respect there to Councilmember Kotnovich. This is for the suspension only, I'll offer. Right. We have a motion by Mr. Kotnovich. Second. Seconded by Reverend Edwards. This is for suspension. Machines are open. Mr. Schultz. Measures passes 9 0. A resolution appointing Plaquemines Parish members of the Regional Planning Commission and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Councilmember Kodnovich. I'll offer. We have a motion by Mr. Conovich. No, Need a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Champagne. Mr. Conovich. This is the Regional Planning Committee. 
usually the parish president, Mr. Hinckley, the chair of the council, Mr. LaFrance. I was on it last year, and it's two council members, so I'll stay on it. Mr. Allen Hero from the public said he'd stay on it, and we need one more person from the public. Uh, Robert Hopkins. Robert Hopkins. Now, Mr. Hero, we, we received a letter this week, and Mr. Hero is going to be out for probably the next three meetings or so. Well, he could, he could put Maybe we could proxy up to go to the meeting for him. Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's, it's an important uh, organization to be a member of, and it's, it's, it's important that we be there and have a presence at these meetings. So I'd, I'd like to have, it brings in money, okay? So we really do need to find a proxy for him so that that chair is not empty. Yes, sir. Okay. That's something. I, 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 I will find someone to, we'll to, to do that. I don't know if his proxy could be a council member. I, I, I'd have to find that out. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that right there. But, uh, okay. Now, who appoints the public? That comes from the administration, huh? Your approval. It, um, it's my approval on that right there, so. What? You finished, Mr. Conovitz? Yes, sir. Mr. Newsom? So, uh, again, like you, you spoke, Mr. Hinckley, of, of being very important for this Regional Planning Commission, uh, <laughs> we, this council, this board, hadn't really had a chance to even communicate with each other about this. Yeah. I, I do realize it's very important. I, I would wish, uh, I do agree with, with yourself being on it, uh, our council chairman, Mr. LaFrance, being on it, but other folks, uh, you can just tell, say we're just going to half-heartedly appoint them without right. having a good discussion from this council is... is uh, I don't have the proper word to we, use we for it. Have, we have until the next meeting, so... Can let, this item be deferred and we look do at that? it? Because the meeting's not until... The 23rd, maybe? I have to no, the regional planning, we just had a meeting this Tuesday, this past Tuesday, so it won't be... I've got the list at the office there, so the next meeting won't be until like a month from whatever this Tuesday's date was, like the, might be like February the... It's always the second Tuesday of the month right there. So yeah, I would request this item be deferred so we can have time. To, <laughs> we can do that. I do, I do agree. So um, uh, another question. So how many folks are on this committee do we, from, do, or what do we have? How many? Five. five. And is it a, it's just a five from who? It's who? five from Plaquemines Parish. You've got Plaquemines Parish, St. Charles, St. John, Jefferson, Orleans, St. Tammany, St. Bernard, and Tangibahoa Parish. So I have I have an old list here. These names, y'all, I'm not even going to bring up, but they old. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see this. The council is this councilist board able to discuss it amongst ourselves and with, with, of course, with your input of it because uh, it is big. It, it is very important, and um, it, it's something that we don't shouldn't need to be rushing through right now at this time. At this no time, same time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Ms. McCarthy, I'm interested in learning more about. Um, what we're looking at for the Regional Planning Commission. And I'm wondering if I can attend, if if there's a schedule that we can look at as well and what you decide. It's an op it's open to the public. So you there there's attendees there that aren't on the board, on the commission. Okay. Yeah. So I'd like to somehow get a, a schedule of when the meetings and where I, they are. I can I've got it on my desk. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any more comments from the table? Mr. Conovich, you are deferring this? Defer it. Thank you. Are we just going to defer the suspension, or do you want to introduce this? Can I introduce it. Okay. You want to revert back now? That way, that way, if you introduce them, that way we can move forward mm -hmm. once we get the names. We, we can plug the names in before Ooh. we continue. Yeah. Go back to introductions. Sure. It should be eight. Agenda item eight, introduction of ordinances and resolutions. This will be for Councilmember Konovich, a resolution appointing Plaquemines Parish members of the Regional Planning Commission and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Eleven A two, a resolution appointing an interim constable for justice of the peace, Ward Two, 
Parish of Plaquemines and calling a special election to fill the vacancy in the Office of Constable for Justice of the Peace Ward 2, Parish of Plaquemines, State of Louisiana, and other matters in connection therewith, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Council Member Edwards. Yes. I'll second. Put a you make a motion? Yes, okay. We have a motion by Reverend Evers, seconded by Dr. Goy. Reverend Evers. Yeah, it's out, out with the constable. This is just for the suspension. Just for the suspension. Right. So he has to wait to talk about it until. Okay. This is just for the suspension. Machines are open. And the measure passes 9 0. A resolution appointing an interim constable for Justice of the Peace, Ward 2, Parish of Plaquemines, and calling a special election to fill the vacancy in the Office of Constable for Justice of the Peace, Ward 2, Parish of Plaquemines, State of Louisiana, and other matters in connection therewith, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto, Councilmember Edwards. Yeah, all for this, Rep. We have a motion by Reverend Evers, seconded by Dr. Goy. Reverend Evers? Yes, all for As read. Any discussion from the table? Mr. Newsom? Yes. Uh, so we're calling for a special election. I guess, um, when, when, when are we looking at? I guess that's a, I guess that's a game. The fall, huh? October. The next big election. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if you, if you want, I can, I, I think I believe that answers Mr. Newsom's question. Yeah. Um, the next available special election is actually the fall election because it's too late to put it on the uh, uh, a special election on the even though they're having a special election in the spring on the regular spring election date because the deadline was uh, December to call that election. So this would you would be appointing an interim person. They would serve until the fall election, and once whoever is elected in the fall election is elected, they would take office then and finish out the term. If that person. Uh, the interim, are they allowed to run for that position? There's no prohibition against it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Ms. McCarthy? My question is for Ms. Vaughn. Um, so will there be another race at that time from our parish? It, will we incur any costs at that time? Yeah, the sheriff. The, the sheriff for that day. Okay. Yeah. I was just trying to find out if that was the same election. Thank you. Governor? Sheriff, the clerk, the assessor, there's several Good, thank you. Mr. Schultz? Uh, Mr. Edwards, uh, it looks like we're appointing Mr. Brock's. Brock. Uh, can you just give a brief background, I guess? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Mr. Clarence Brock's is here all the time. He, he's one of the most popular person on East Bank. He's, he's a member of the fire department. He's a decorated veteran he participated in everything that happened in our community he worked with all of our children i mean you couldn't find a better person than him i mean he he cleaned the yards for all of our senior citizens okay. for free i mean i could just be in the next hour uh talking about that couldn't find a better yeah person than him. i didn't put two and two together until you said volunteer fire department uh chief brock so uh i just wanted to know but yeah i, I know who you're talking about now <laughs> that kind of person. <laughs> Any more comments from the table? I just have one other thing. I'm, I'm actually, Reverend Edwards. I'm actually, Kim, can you send a copy of this to the lady at Silver Service because she needs this to terminate my position. Okay. Any more comments from the table? I missed that big expensive check. <laughs> <clears throat> Administration, audience, machines is open. And, you met, and the measure passes unanimously 9-0. Next item, please. 11B, District Non Update Count. Oh, 11 3. A resolution changing the date of the January 26, 2023 council meeting to January 31st, 2023 at 3 o'clock p.m. Withdraw, or immediately. Withdraw it. Right. Yeah, but technically she should finish reading it, but that's okay. fine. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Go to B. <laughs> All right. 11B, District Non-Update, Council Member Kotnovich. One, discussion and update on Parts Sulfur Water Plant. Just wanted to, I know it's new, but 
yeah. find out where we at with we, Port Self. Uh, again, uh, we have a meeting set up next week uh, with uh, engineering, uh, with, with Trigon Engineering Company, and uh, with Mr. Morgan uh, next week to expedite this and move forward. And where are we at with the we still have salt water problem? Because the river's still low. No, I, I, but it's not that it's not low enough for the salt water. I mean, I believe those. I mean, in Bootville, do we st we still running that salinization plant? Same thing. State your name, your address, please. Robert Morgan, one twenty six Hill Plain Road. Um, we're still running the RO in Boothville. Um, we did we did not run the one on the East Bank. Uh, the river has came up some. The chlorides are are low right now. That we're running around 150 coming in and around 40 going out. So the chlorides has uh, went down dra drastically. So um, I was talking to rent, um, the parish attorney today. Uh, so we're, we're expecting maybe a few more days, and they can probably get it out of there. The RO system. All right. And we do have a meeting set up with Trigon. It's on the 19th at 9 o'clock. So, uh, All right. Thank you. I just wanted to get you up here and tell you that Georgia is better uh, than Alabama. <laughs> oh, so is the fish still biting? <laughs> Thank you. See, see, District 7 update, Council Member LaFrance. I'll defer that. And I'll get with Mr. Billy next week. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Conovich, seconded by Mr. Newsom. Motion to adjourn. Any discussion? The shades is open. And the measure passes 9 0. Thank you. Go, dogs. We have adjournment at, what's the time? 5.54. 5.54.